Hi there, it's Helen Godden, all the way from Australia, and I'm the Sweet 16 Ambassador for Handy Quilter, and this is a little segment that we like to call Short and Sweet. Today I'm going to take you through a process of a design I call Teardrops, and it's not going to make you cry. It's a um, little process of designs that once you get the basics, you can then vary it with so many different options. It's a really fun one to do. So let's get started on the Sweet 16. Foot pedal. Finding that foot pedal can sometimes be a challenge. So as the name suggests, we're going to start with that teardrop shape. And then we're going to repeat that shape. And again. So you can see here I've quite deliberately have an open space and then some tight, tight stitching so you get that contrast of open and busy, let's say. So once you've done that first shape, you now repeat it. And each time you are starting with that inside shape and then repeating, repeating. So I've gone around three times in total, the first shape and then two echoes. It doesn't really matter how many times, but it um, does help to get that consistency. I'll show you one more time. So as you're quilting, because you've gone around three times, you end up on the opposite side. If you decide that you really need to come down here on the quilt, you don't want to keep working on that side of the quilt, you're concerned about moving down here, well just travel or echo around the outside of that last shape to get you to where you want to be. So it doesn't really matter if you've gone around that shape three times. In the overall scheme of things, it's just going to fit in with the others if it echoes around and you travel to an area that you now want to fill. So once you've got that basic style, you can start to change that initial shape that we make. So this time it was a teardrop, what if we change that to something like a love heart? So you can see then I just travelled all the way back up to here because I'm a bit concerned about this empty space I'm leaving behind. The consistency comes in in that shape is about the same size each time with the little echoes and I really like the way you've got the contrast of empty and full. So that's our little love heart design. Maybe we could try triangles. So you can see with this triangle shape, it really needs to be quite a long skinny triangle. So I like to think about an ice cream cone. I think I'm just getting hungry again. But that way you make a triangle shape that you can stitch around and echo quite easily. As you can see with some of these, they tend to be all sort of heading in one direction. You can always echo and move to another area to have those going in all different directions. The beauty of this design is that it doesn't have to start in a corner or on an edge or a ditch of a quilt. It can be absolutely started in the middle of an area, middle of a block, and it will just continue to grow one shape onto the next because you can always travel somewhere to be able to make it grow in a different direction.
So you can see there I just travelled all the way from up the top down here to an open space where I need to do more designs. Now I don't suggest that you would actually put all these different designs together. I'm sort of giving you different examples here. But you can see how the teardrops or the love heart design is quite a feminine flowing pattern. The triangles are perhaps more of a masculine or geometric or abstract design. So there's all different ways of using this pattern. But once you have that basic concept, the, the variations are quite endless. I'm going to show you one now that's more of a, an, a leaf design. I'm going to start with the centre vein of the leaf and then you'll see how we go. So that centre vein really sets me on a path on a new direction and then I'm going to find that leaf shape around it. That's going to look lovely on um, a quilt with all autumn leaves and fall colours, something like that. Again, it's that open space contrasting with the close stitching that starts to give it a real impact of design. There's another one I can do that's the same principle of starting with that inside shape and then repeating it. Uh, and this one's called Build a Bridge. And as the name implies, it needs to be built onto something. So whether that be onto the um, ditch or a border or onto the edge of an applique, it needs to start on, a, on an edge as opposed to all these designs can just start in the middle of a quilt block. So I'm just going to give myself a little um, ditch here as if I had an edge to start with and I'll be starting with an initial shape of just a little hump or like the letter N upside down. There's my first initial shape and now I repeat it. This time I'm going to repeat fairly parallel whereas before there was that exaggeration in the echoing. This time it's quite parallel. I might even use the width of the foot to help me with that um, eyeballing that shape. So you can see why I call that one build a bridge and get over it. It's kind of a rainbow design but from here I've done my initial shape and echoed, I'm now going to start back at that initial shape again. But this time it's going to join on to the previous stitching. So there's my initial shape and now repeat it again. I'm going to come down here and do it again in a much smaller scale, more of a micro scale, and we'll see how it looks.
So you can see in this design, what's quite important is that that stitching comes up and goes, you know, backtracks back onto itself, actually touches back onto the previous stitch line. Because then the visual effect is that one is underlaying the next. It actually looks like I must have started here because that one is underneath that one, under this one, under that one, and yet we all know I actually started over here. I love the optical illusion that this design gives. Uh, there's also another variation. Of course, there's always variations. I call this one Statue of Liberty. So there really is endless variations you can do with this design, but they all start with that initial shape and then repeating the, the echoing and the travelling around each shape. Something like this, which is quite an intricate pattern, I certainly wouldn't suggest you do this over a very busy print fabric, something like a K facet that's you know very busy with bright flowers, etc. You're putting a lot of effort there into your quilting design and it's really going to be quite lost. So something like this where you're really showing off your best patterns and best designs is when you do it on a plain area like this fabric here. So in perhaps every alternating block where there's a plainer area or in a border or something, um, you really can't compete with a busy fabric, so you wait for those open areas to really show off and shine with your best designs. So let's have a look where we started off with our teardrops. We started with that teardrop shape, we then tried the love hearts, which is really just a teardrop with a bit of a bump in it. And then we had some triangles for a more abstract geometric look, um, our fall leaves, and then the same theory applies to our builder bridge. So there's quite a few designs there for you to try. So I hope you've enjoyed our teardrops and I will see you all very soon. Bye bye.